What's up out there? Welcome back to some more Melver Idol. In this video, I wanted to go through and give you the top five things that I wished I'd have known about this game um, when I started playing it, or things that I wished I understood a little bit better when I started playing it like a year ago. So, without wasting too much time, let's jump right into it. First and foremost, the combat triangle. Um, it's basically rock, paper, scissors. Uh, Rock beats scissors, scissors beats paper, paper beats rock. Same concept, except melee beats your ranged, ranged beats magic, and magic beats melee. Uh, it is basically shown to you in the game with these little triangles. I'm fighting these noxious serpents. These things are ranged, and I am working with my melee character. So attack, strength, or defense is all melee, and then, of course, ranged and magic are ranged and magic. So with melee attacking a ranged of course when he's got to live long enough uh i get a buff i get a multiplier i get a, a damage reduction multiplier if i'm fighting the wrong thing uh let's get out of this thing here get away from that if i'm fighting the wrong thing let's say i go against these giant maws these are magic and i'm taking melee up against it it's going to give me a damage reduction uh, multiplier of 0.75 meaning I this thing can do more damage against me now if I attack this with ranged I go back to my buff if I attack it with magic it equals out there's no change so the first thing that I would say is know your combat triangle and know what attacks what and what gets a buff and what gets a debuff it is not like Diablo where you're gonna have like your melee character or you're going to have your ranged, or you're going to have your magic. You need all three, and especially once you start getting into these, um, the lower Slayer, or the tougher Slayer stuff, like the Shrouded Badlands, Perilous Peaks, Dark Waters, and Unhallowed Wasteland, once you start getting into that realm, all these elite tasks, Desolate Plains, not so much. I mean, it's starting to become a problem there, but once you get into the last four, it's really noticeable. And then once you get into, like, say, the Volcano the Stronghold and all the God Dungeons, and especially this stuff down here, there is a check in Into the Mist where you have to do, there's three different phases of combat you have to do, and one of each phase is each of the, the combat styles. So there is no choice. It locks you out. So just know going into the game, or going into the, further into the game, that you will need to know this combat triangle. You will need to practice it and you will need to know, uh, it will make your battles go better. Uh, if you're able to idle these dungeons, you're probably not going to have an issue with it, but you can get into these dungeons a little sooner than you should. If you know the combat triangle and manually fight in those dungeons. So, uh, just an FYI, know the combat triangle. It will help you a lot. Um, closely along with that is going to be tip number two. And I'll go fight this thing here real quick. In combat, if you take damage, you can click on the food button to heal. And it says right here, your attack resets when eating manually. So I click that, my attack resets, uh, and then this thing starts, you know, hitting me again. I'm not going to die here, but let's say this was just slightly a little bit stronger than I could withstand with my auto eat. Or if I didn't have auto eat... Um, like very early on in the game when you don't have auto eat, uh, this method here will work and, or in, if you're trying to fight something a little bit thicker and what the method is, is you click the inner key or you click the heal button and then you hold the inner key. Um, if you time it, if you get things right, it will auto heal. You can see it blipping over and coming back. That's not auto heal. Auto heal right there. That's me holding the inner key. Auto heal won't kick in until the health drops down to 436 on this character. So you can absolutely get into some content you probably shouldn't be into. Um, you can also get, uh, you can handle content without auto heal um, as well. So the hold enter method gets you into a lot of cool things. Uh, we can get out of here now. It will help you a lot. So know how to do that. I don't know if it works on mobile. I I play mostly on Steam or on uh, the web. Any combat I actually do is on Steam or the web. I don't actually do combat on my mobile. So mobile for me is just offline idling stuff. So 
Uh, again, I don't really do the, the combat. If I'm going to sit down and do a dungeon I've never done or some really hard content, I'm sitting in my computer to do it. So not sure how that works on mobile, but if you hold enter, you can get through a lot more combat. And that is tip number two. Tip number three, this one, this one took me a little bit longer than I think it should have to realize. Uh, if you go into your bank and you see these items that are red, the red in color, that's because they're locked. I stared at that lock button. I don't know how long, but, and I, I don't know what I was thinking, but I never really considered clicking it until one day I saw it and I, I, I hit it and I was like, Ooh, it locks things. You can actually stop yourself from selling. Uh, this will let you upgrade. I ran into something when I was, I try, I've tried making this video a few times and I keep getting hung up on things, but um, I tried upgrading something and the upgrade button was locked and I can't remember what it was. But for the most part, if everything is uh, not locked, you can sell it. If it is locked, you can't. Uh, it looks like you can upgrade, which I've really not had an issue because a lot of these things I, you know, I equip or whatever. I've not had any issues with, but it's there to prevent you from doing something you shouldn't. So it also prevents you from in going into alt magic with item alchemy or just learning it, really any of these. Uh, if the item is locked, you cannot select it here. So if I collect, if I click on this, I can do carp. If I come up here, select carp and toggle that. They will no longer be available down here. Come in here, carp's gone. So <laughs> this was a, lot, a hard lesson to learn um, because I was trying to figure out something on one of my videos why I had an issue and it was because I had the damn stuff locked. So locking will keep you from doing stupid things. It will also keep you from doing things that you really want to do. And in particular, I was trying to sell, um, like I got all these God gear items that are worth a lot of money and i was trying to take them into item alchemy three down here get a nice big boost on them and sell them for decent money but i couldn't because i had things locked so keep that in mind uh you can lock things to keep you from selling it do lock the things you don't want to lose especially things like say the crown of relics that's hard to get or your signet ring or even the um oh this clue chases insignia these things are difficult to get or well they're not easy and locking them keeps you from losing them so keep that in mind um tip number four this one is i've gone round and round and this is what was causing me to redo my videos trying to describe this without getting into some long lengthy detail is very difficult um i'm going to try to do this with just three skills and hopefully you'll get the concept or what I'm trying to explain here. What I'm talking about, tip number four is going to be about using your mastery pool. When I first started playing this game, I think I saw my tree cut. I started off on cutting normal trees and I saw that you could spend this mastery pool. So I started just spending it. And I really didn't understand what I was doing. To explain this in what I think is probably the easiest method is to just, there's three, there's three bars for every non-combat skill. There is the skill itself that's going to generate XP. There is each item in the skill that's going to have its own mastery XP. Neither of these can be spent. And then there's going to be this mastery pool, which is accumulation of, uh, which one of these, one of these shows it fairly well. Smithing maybe. Yeah. Some skills show it, some skills don't. So you're going to have each of these items and all the other items in each skill or each non-combat skill is going to grant you mastery XP for the item. It's going to grant you mastery pool XP and it's going to grant you XP for the, the skill level itself. So the skill level can't be spent. And once you've put it into an item, you can't spend it. Once the item's at 99, it's at 99 and that's it. But you can spend this mastery pool. Now, as these items, as the mastery pool for each item increases, you get more XP. So the longer you let something run, the more XP you're going to get. What you don't want to do is just go through here and blow this mastery pool XP unless you know what you're doing. Let that build up. And that was one of my mistakes. I was doing wood cutting or fishing or whatever, and I was just dumping points in. and I really wasn't paying attention. 
The mastery pool bar itself has bonuses. If you come up here to this checkpoints, there's 10, 25, 50, and 95. Pay attention to what these are. Some of these you want to be at 95% because they give you a good bonus. 10% chance to double items is really good. If you're doing for a completion account, you may want to back this down to 50% and then just use all your overage to finish out your, your items. But that depends on where you're at. If you're working on making money or something, leave that at 95 because you're going to get more items. You know, you can see where I'm going with that. I hope. Same thing with wood cutting. But on wood cutting, the 95% bonus is receiving a bare a base of two birds nests. This one I have not really cared about. So in the case of wood cutting, I don't really care about getting extra birds nest. So I always worked on getting my masteries done for the trees. Um, whereas say in uh, smithing, I usually I'm working on my completion now. So I, um, it's down to 50%, but I would normally at least maintain 50%, um, if not 95%, especially here. Uh, crafting, crafting I really don't care about. Um, this is one that I've definitely gone down to 50%. Uh, they've added some new things in the game, and I haven't ran crafting since, so that's why it's not at 50% now. Um, let's see here. Agility is another good one to have over 95 because you get obstacle cost reductions. Uh, summoning, you get the shard reductions. Herb lore, you get a uh, chance to double items. So the bulk of these, you're going to want to leave in this 95% range or let it get to that 95% range. Once it hits 95%, you can freely spend this. I mean, or you can strategically keep it under 95%, but above 50. And there is stoppages. Like if you try to spend more, uh, let's see, what's one that I do have up here. Um, if there's a gold box and you go to spend it, it will say you're about to lose that, that benefit. Now, on the flip side, and this is where things get complicated, is each item itself, like in the case of bronze bars here, um, at each mastery per level of the item, you get all of these bonuses. And all the bonuses are different depending on what you're looking at. Um, so, my the, the one that I would go use the easiest as an example is Herb Lore. Herb Lore, if I wanted melee accuracy potions, um, each tier corresponds to the level of the item itself so this is the easiest one i can use for an example because it's fairly straightforward at level 50 you unlock the tier 3 potions that's the best bang for your buck that you're going to get for potions um up until i mean obviously you want to get these to 90 but if you're sitting at level 48 49 something like that spend the little bit of mastery pool get it to there because it's a long road to get to 90 um, and if you need that potion, that tier three potion will get you a lot further than hanging onto a tier two potion and trying to get to three, if that makes sense. Um, now you don't want to blow your whole mastery pool just to get to level 50 by any stretch, but if you're close to it, burn the little bit of extra, get to level the 50 mastery on, um, potions, or at least that's my recommendation. If you need it, if you know, if you're just trying to level this up or you're trying to do completion, you don't necessarily have to do that. But um, there's a, a meta game in here, uh, a mini game, whatever you want to call it, that you can play between how you spend the mastery and what you're doing with the items. And every one of these is different. They all have different. These are all at um, 10, 25, 50, and 95 for the mastery pool. All of the items themselves are different. They all have different things that they offer. Another really good one to leave at 95% it, on the mastery pool is fire making because that gives you a 5% increase to global mastery XP. So that one is definitely one you want as soon as possible because it will benefit all of the other ones. So tip number four is learn and know how to use the mastery pool XP to your advantage and don't waste it. Um, it's probably not all wasted because you'll get it back eventually, but you'll slow your progress down in other ways if you don't play the game correct, right. You know what I mean? So that's tip number four. Tip number five is everybody's popular or everybody's favorite thing, and that's making money. Um, when you first start the game, you have very limited options. You can go into combat, you can do wood cutting, fishing, or mining. Um, mining is not going to make you any money itself. 
there's no money here to be made. These ores don't sell for very much, so I wouldn't bother with those unless you're just selling everything you have because you need space or, you know, whatever. Especially early on when you don't have much bank space, uh, you're going to want to probably sell as much as you can that you don't need. Um, fishing and woodcutting offer some really good money-making potential. Fishing, once you start getting into, say, raw cave fish, uh, swordfish, manta rays, sharks, whales, and even these magic fish, these all sell for decent money. Uh, woodcutting, get down to magic trees, they sell for decent money. We're talking early, early game. Combat, there's not really a lot of money to be made. You can, it's a longer grind. Uh, Woodcutting and fishing will get you there faster. Now, once you've built up a little bit of money, you can go into mining. And now I said mining doesn't make money, but if you go in and buy the gym gloves, you buy one of these gym gloves, it's 450,000. You're going to need some seed money for it. But you mine those 2,000 out, you'll get between six to 700,000 gold out of that. It's you'll basically grind off uh, collecting gems, sell them off, buy another glove, grind it out, sell those off, and you'll rinse and repeat. Slowly, you will build up your money, your bankroll. Um, those are probably the best things you can do early game um, if you're not getting into thieving or agility. Now, thieving, you can just pretty much jump right into. Um, Although you will need some source of food, so you would need to go into combat or something or a little bit of fishing, a little bit of cooking, you know what I mean? Like you'll, and if you're in adventure mode, it's going to put a different spin on things. But uh, with the thieving rework, thieving is an excellent, excellent, excellent source of money from late early game to mid game to late game. I mean, there's a lot of money to be made here. Uh, you get different items, the, um, the jeweled necklace, the sneakers, the chapel nor, uh, and then this chick drops the fine coin purse. This guy, the golden thief drops this golden mask. Let's see here. The marauder, I think drops, I thought somebody dropped something. Maybe he does the thieves cape. There's a lot of really good items in here that build up and make you more and more money. And if you pair that with agility or as you build agility up, you will make money there too. Uh, both thieving and agility will make you a lot of money. So keep those in mind as you build up through the game. Uh, selling off anything that you don't need anymore, or if you have a, an extended quantity of things like farming, you're not going to make a whole lot off of farming. But if you go into herbs and just grow a ton of barren toe, now barren toe is kind of a late game thing. Uh, snape grass works well. I shouldn't say late game. Barren toe is higher level farming, so it's going to take a while to get there. But these barren toe are worth a lot of money. So this pile's worth two and a quarter million. Um, I don't, oh, I do have some snape grass. This sells for a decent amount. Uh, Three million gold isn't anything to bark at, you know, or, or depending on where you're at in the game. Like right now, it's not much of anything to me, but earlier in the game, it was something I really needed a lot of fast, you know. So um, you can make some decent money off of selling food. Selling items, you know, spoils of war, all this stuff. A stack of this stuff's worth a million, 1.5 million. So it's not worth a ton, but it is worth something, you know, depending on how much you're hurting for money. Uh, you can craft some of this stuff up and sell it. Um, other good sources of money, and these take uh, these take a lot of skills to get done. So they're getting more advanced as we go. Uh, you can come down here to fletching, javelin, these dragon javelin heads. These are going to take uh, redwood logs. So you're going to have to have wood cutting. You're going to have to go in here and mine up runite, dragonite, and coal. Smith that up into dragonite bars. And then work over here to drag, drag and javelin heads. And then finally have enough fletching to be able to fletch those. They sell for a lot of money. Um, of course, rune javelins per sell decently too. So as you're leveling some of your other skills up, you can kind of coordinate working these skills together. Uh, let's see what else we got for making money selling off duplicate gear all that kind of thing I've mentioned before um, and of course we talked about thieving and agility a recent one that I found out that I, I like it's not a it's not what I would call a huge money maker like it's not going to move as much cash into your pocket as thieving will but this alt, at, alt magic item alchemy once you get high enough level to use 
well, any of these item alchemies really, but especially this, uh, well, and even rags to riches, because this turns, turns coal into a random gem. Um, and if, if you're like, my character's way late in the game, I have tons of coal, you know, I can burn this up as, you know, especially when you're leveling, uh, this one, I would recommend under two circumstances. Number one, you're leveling magic because you can use all these different pieces here to get leveled up and make some money at the same time. Um, especially with item alchemy three. And number two is if you have a lot of in game content or a lot of in game material, like these helmets that are worth 400,000 a piece, you can sell those for almost double, almost double. Like it makes a ton of money. So you could sell off a bunch of this extraneous crap that you have instead of selling the stack or selling five of them. Now you have to be careful because you have to pay attention to what the magic's doing and not let it sell them all off. Um, but there's money to be made there. And I really like this item alchemy. It's not a, a, a great solution for everything, but for certain things, like if you're leveling or if you're trying to sell off some really high dollar goods for a little more money, um, item alchemy lets you actually sell the item, sell it for more money. Where if you come in here and say like the signet ring and stuff like that, these all say except item sales. They're, they're global gold except for item sales. But you're not actually selling anything here. So you can actually use uh, the the items that have this that say except from sales on item alchemy unless it otherwise specifies because the signet ring definitely specifies you can't use it for alt magic but that rounds out my top five tips uh those are things that i really wish i had known especially like the combat triangle and uh holding enter through combat and stuff like those would have made my well, this character here, this is my standard character. That would have made a lot of the early days of this much better. So that will do it for this video. We will catch you on the next one. Take care.